righty y'all welcome on back to the channel it is deer scouting time so if you watched my last video we were uh, checking in on some fish out here doing some fish care it is deer season right now archery season uh, I have yet to sit in a stand I might I might do it on this trip but uh, I at least want to see what is what's going on uh, as of right now it is hot as hell and it is a southern wind and there's really only two places right now I can go sit and not get busted. But uh, tomorrow the wind is gonna switch out of the north and I cannot wait to sit. There's a couple of trees out here I really wanna sit in, see what's going on, uh, see who's coming in. I'm really looking for some call bucks. You know, I'm probably gonna wait till later in the season to go after anything big, but I really wanna get Stephanie on it here. There's three other deer hunting properties around here on uh, around this lease, so this is low fence. This is not high fence, we have neighbors and uh, they like to they like to put them down. So uh, that's the thing about hunting, you know, low fence, high fence, really big areas. I'm sure a lot of you have hunted uh, places like this. So you always gotta be conscious of what deer are doing next door and how do you keep them on your spot? It just makes you hunt a little bit differently. Not as selective as you could be on a, a really huge place where you have more control of uh, the deer and you can really, grow them really big get it get them up to seven eight years old right now i'm in a t-shirt and a camo hat it's probably not even gonna matter because i'm gonna go sit in the blind but just to you know just to get the vibes on uh we'll throw just a little bit of camo at least some pants or something and i am gonna grab the 308 just in case uh some hog jammers decide to show up and uh you know old mega tooth comes out i'm just gonna have to put him down so we got the meat wagon here with us today so we can carry around all of our uh, supplies to you know, do all the maintenance and stands and feeders and all that stuff. Let's go see what's moving around out here. Just spotted our first buck. It was an eight point. It wasn't a giant, but uh, you know, just one of those younger looking eights, probably three years old or so. Here in Texas, we just have, it's a lot of shrubs and cactus and mesquite trees, short trees. And if you look out over the land, I mean, you would just never see a deer. It is so thick. So in South Texas, they do a lot of like senderos and clear those things out and they have feeders so that the, the, the deer can come out to those roads. Out here, we just have, you know, little clearings, but uh, it's very, very difficult. We, we have very few oak trees that we can get up high in and uh, really have a good position on the deer, you know, from a height standpoint. So, um, got a nice box blind behind me it's about 100 yards from that feeder um, I like to give them a little extra corn out in front you know just to give them a spot where I can I can video them or I can get a shot like away from the feeder in case those piggies show up we're gonna be ready with some nice 155 gram just fat tips <laughs> So oh, ow, that's a cactus that hurt. Oh gosh, forgot I'm in Texas, in the middle of Texas where the little cactus live. Backup plan I'm gonna run to this other feeder that is still good with the wind and the direction I can come in on it. Crawl on top. 
top of Booby Hill is what we call it. I'm gonna glass down from there, see what I see. September but I had a baby and uh, that prevented that whole situation from happening so we're a little late to the game but we'll get it locked in all right well the interesting thing about this night is uh I know I look very cozy in my my nice canvas cutter here with my pillow and all that, but I'm actually inside of a deer blind. I'd love to know in the comments if any of you have ever slept inside of a deer blind. I know some of you have, but this is going to be my first time. The interesting thing about my lease right now is uh, there are a bunch of steel workers that are are staying at it. They've been working out of it. Uh, they are just wrapping up their job, and this is like the easiest place for them to stay and, uh, and do the work. So uh, camp is just crazy. It's like a college dorm room. In order to get some sleep, I decided to come out here, and uh, it is peaceful. It is peaceful and quiet. I've got some windows I can crack. This is a, uh, a muddy blind, and I can stretch all the way out in it. So it's, it's really not that bad. And I thought while I was in here, you know, bring the thermals, I'm just kind of scan around, do a little scouting, do a little sleeping, and just kind of hang here for the morning. But it's looking like I've just got a real busy day tomorrow. I've checked four feeders so far, and they've either been not functional or there's no corn in them. I just checked another one before before I got up here. This is a part of the property I've never even hunted either. I don't even know if the cameras are working. I've got some cameras that have been out here a year. Uh, there's some other guys that have some cameras. I'm just not sure if they're working or not. So we're gonna go check everything and get this thing dialed. That's part of the fun, man. That's part of the fun of deer camps. Part of fun being on a lease uh, is just you know doing the work, putting putting some time in, and then. You know, when the deer start showing up and uh, you get one down, it makes it all worth it. And it's just fun hanging around camp, you know. It's something to do, you get to work with your hands. I love it, I enjoy doing it. Putting up stands, filling feeders, doing all that stuff. It's all, it's all part of the fun. But right now, it is time to shut the lights off, listen to the crickets, and get some shut eye. And I will see you guys in the great outdoors for another adventure in the morning. Didn't see Jack Squat last night, but a raccoon. And uh, it's about 6.20 in the morning right now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna head out. Let's get the day started. Four does. It's a good sign, no bucks. The hogs have just torn this area up. This is an area that I always see them when I'm driving. There's no feeders around here, but it's just like a deep thicket. And uh, they just live. There's a couple of them that just always live here. So it's good. It's good to see some life. Meat 
wagon is heavy right now. Got ourselves another empty. I think they are literally all empty. And all that noise back there, that is the rock quarry. They are rocking and rolling, literally. I've never hunted this feeder before, but uh, some of the other guys have sent me some pics and there's, there's a nice 10 point, it's a wide 10 point that he's short. Probably put him on the hit list. And I've got a camera right here that uh, I've got a solar panel I think I'm gonna hook up, put on. But right now we gotta load some corn in this baby. Now we've got the camera working. Should be test connection. Everything's looking good. And I've got this battery pack, solar battery pack. Moultrie makes it. It's got two solar panels on it. On to the next one. All right, hold up for a second. I just got a notification on my my uh, Moultrie app. Last picture I have is that booby flat. That's what we call it. What is the date on this? <laughs> January. But there we are. There's the meat wagon. It's working. So I'll get some notifications on that. Okay, we're sitting at what I call Gordo, my favorite spot. I, I don't really hunt it that much, but the times I've sat here, it's, it's just insane. Like some of the best sits I've ever had. But I think it needs a new battery. I picked up a new battery at Bucky's on the way down just because I thought maybe, maybe we might need to do a little maintenance. I got uh, a couple of these and a couple of six volts. I really like this blind, y'all. It's a, it's old. Call it the horn's nest, but um, it just had man, it had some old deer on it last year, and it was uh, it's really I mean it's bordering like our neighbor's fence. Gotta fill this baby up and keep going. I've got a I've got a milk run, so to speak, of of corn feeders I've got to fill. Down here at one of my uh, my favorite places, just scene-wise, on the property. I call it Turkey Bacon. You see right there, that looks like a scrape. And I want to come back here and I'll put up a tree stand. It looks really good. It's got a good background. North wind's gonna be coming from this way. And then I'm probably gonna set up a new feeder inside of here or try to get this old one working. That's, you know, 15, 20 yard shot from up in that tree. And it's set up with more trees behind it, so you're gonna be brushed in. So you've got you've got other little lanes out here you can shoot at. Just been wanting to set up something with a tree out here for a long time. So again, something I should have done back in August, September, but I was having babies. More work to do. Hopefully it all pans out. I'm sure it will. We'll get a big buck down eventually. Ladies and gentlemen, moment of truth is now. Done all this work. Just had another guy on the lease get here. Um, he helped me with a couple of things. Filling some feeders, getting some more cameras up and everything. And we have had some success. So the very first feeder I filled up this morning, saw two does on it already on the, on the cameras, just getting the updates on the Moultrie. The wind has switched. It's coming out of the north now, and it is, uh, it's gonna be good for, um, well, exactly a year ago, the tree stand that I hunted out of where I killed a really nice buck. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna see down there tonight, but that, that's where we're going and I'm taking the arrows, baby. Now's, now's the exciting time. We get to go sit and I feel way more confident. All the feeders are full. We're getting some deer that are gonna hang around and uh, hopefully get to see some. It's still pretty hot. It's gonna get cold tonight, but um, I'm actually just thinking about hunting, hunting in our, uh, our performance fishing shirt. 
it's green and it's you know it's got a little bit of breakup on it but it's super comfortable it's it's nice for right now that's it's pretty hot and it's got a hood so i may just throw a throw a face mask on and go with this right here got the got the bino harness ready to go range finder release is on the bow never leave home without it but don't act like you haven't done it i've done it hopefully now i can finally get some close-up video of some deer for you guys you ready let's get in the tree All right, we're gonna walk in from here. So grab the bow, grab the pack, get the cameras, let's roll out. Well, that wind is whipping, but it is in a good direction now. Perfect direction for this block. So I've got Thank <laughs> you. 
that is going to do it for for this video. Helicopters flying over, man. Uh, just got in. I just had something really interesting happen to me too. I was checking one last feeder, and I checked it. And as soon as I let some corn out, these hogs started coming, and I moved to like kind of scare them off, and they just came at me and were grunting. Like it's, I just literally jumped on top of the meat wagon. I didn't have my pistol on me like I normally do. It freaked me out. So anyway, I might go have to get a little revenge on those puppies. But had a really great sit tonight. Uh, you know, had a couple spikes, couple of does. Saw them really close, which is always awesome. And a young 12 point, it's like a three year old 12 point. He's gonna be a, just a mega jammer when he's older and that's that's really the only general rule out here on, on taking deers you don't want to shoot a three-year-old that's either a 10 or above so um you know young younger deer that just don't look like they're gonna progress very well and uh older deer obviously all fair game but you know the nice thing is coming back from the elk woods with over 300 pounds of meat i don't feel obligated to pull the pull the trigger pull the release in this case and uh you know i had that one single doe would have been a nice doe to take if it was bigger but it was just skinny skinny by itself and man i enjoy watching them i hope you guys enjoy watching them too that's gonna that's gonna do it for our scouting report i'm getting lots of more photos from the other cameras looks like some good cull bucks looks like some some good trophy bucks as well so uh, we'll see how Steph is at the shooting range and see if we can get her on a buck here in a couple weeks. But that is it for this video. And if you guys want to stay tuned for more outdoor adventures, you know what to do. Go ahead and smash that like button for greatness in the woods. And I will see you guys on the next one. God bless you. Great